I have this lovely merino fleece. The tips are a little felted. There's some lovely things in it that need to be washed out. But if that gets put into my wash, I end up with a very yucky, awful, difficult to remove the lanolin fleece. I want to show you how to go from this to this and just the washing. This has not been had anything else done to it. I wouldn't recommend this to be done on a prize winning fleece that you've bought at a festival. But on this fleece, the staple length is huge. You've got a staple length of, ah, uh, there's my hand and I've got a small hand. You've got a staple length on it of about 10 inches and you're getting a good six, seven inch staple length even with what I'm about to do. I'm just attaching it to my tripod so that you can see what I'm doing. As you saw at the beginning, the sheep's name was Honey Bear. I've already been working on it to some degree. Lay out your fleece on your skirting table, right, er, cut side up. I want to, there we go. Now, it was the shepherdess that raised this fleece that showed me this technique. She called it second shearing. But second shearing to me brings up images of this. Now, I don't like that. That's a second cut. That's where the shearer went over twice. That's not what you want. What you want is the long sections. What I am doing is I am pulling lock by lock this off. It seems like a lot of work, but realistically, if you look at the white fleece that's there, that fleece, her name was Tinkerbell, um, it isn't as much work as it seems. And it saves so much work at the end. Because what you're cutting off, I'm going to show you here, this part I've already done, this part here I haven't, this part here I've already done, I'm going to show you what I've cut off. I'm going to pull this section off completely. This has already been trimmed down. That's all that I'm cutting out. They're felted tips. They're packed together. If you stick that in the wash, even though they're fairly clean, if you stick that in the wash, that's going to end up in your fiber. All the straw, all the... We'll use the alliteration. Sheep shit is going to be in there. You can go to right almost to the edge where all the dung tags are and you can use that part still because you're cutting off. Now for a shorter staple fleece this is not going to work. I have some polypay that is the virgin shearings, beautiful fleece, but that I wash whole because I can't get a long enough staple afterwards. I'm not one that prefers the long staple anyway. I kind of like the shorter staples. There's a second cut. Let's get rid of that. Beside me here on the left, I have a tub full of stuff that I'm using. I'm going to move this over so you can see. And you just take a lock at a time or two locks at a time and you trim just above where it starts going brown. Dump there that little bit I would trim off again. Pull out a lock, trim it off, pull out a lock, and I'm getting a good six, seven inches still on my thing. These are small scissors, so like child size scissors. That's a good six inches, seven inches, if not six inches, at least five inches. And that's long enough. I'm used to spinning Coradel because that's 
inexpensive and easy like Ashford Corridell rovings because that's quick and easy to spin. And I like the shorter length. I don't like it super long. Super long is harder to get off your drum carter when you put it on the drum carter. Super long is harder for other things. I'm not the type of person that prefers doing tail spinning and all that fancy stuff. I never know what to do with the art yarn when I do make it. I've done it, but never know what to do with it once it's done. I'm not a weaver, so I'm a knitter. I want yarn that, that is easy to knit with, that, that makes clothing that I can wear, that makes things I can use. 